let's go for a ride! You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today! Cycle Cruiser videos brought to you at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey folks, many of you asked me about my thoughts on the brand new redesigned 2017 Suzuki GSXR 1000. I mean, this bike has gone from being a dinosaur to a spaceship. It's got all the electronics now. The engine has been completely redesigned now. As you guys know, the Suzuki Jigsers have been well known for having strong low and mid-range power compared to other super bikes. Also the CBR1000 RR as well. That's one reason why I bought it. I didn't want a bike like a ZX10R that has all its power higher up in the RPMs. On the street, low and mid-range power is where it's at and this bike has it. But now it has top end power. It has power all throughout the rev range now. And it does this thanks to this new technology SRVVT, which stands for Suzuki Racing Variable Valve Timing, which is adopted from their MotoGP bike. And this system works by using a simple small device attached to the outside of the intake cam where centrifugal force pushes steel balls alongside the grooves to rotate the sprocket and retard intake valve timing at a specific RPM, which results in more power at higher RPM. So, like I said, power all throughout the rev range now, much like the new S1000RR. Um, they also increased the rev range to 14,500, 1,000 up from last year's bike. Uh, this bike now has an extra 10 horsepower, supposedly up to 199 horsepower. I doubt if you put that on the dyno, it's going to have 199 at the rear wheel, probably much less. But it's nice to know this bike has a little bump in power. And also they lowered the gear ratio, so you're going to get stronger acceleration. And talking about acceleration, they have added a launch control, uh, which when well, you turn that on, it's going to actually help uh, reduce wheelies. So it's going to, you know... In my opinion, I probably wouldn't even use this. I, I would like to use my own skill with this. People that I've seen use this actually start slower than they would if they do it themselves. Anyways, that's just my opinion on it. I probably wouldn't use it, but I have to try it first, right? Maybe I'll get this bike. I don't know. I'll tell you at the end. But anyways, the, uh, the engine is now smaller. They centralize the engine's mass closer to the front for better uh, front-end feedback. Uh, also, this bike has... Uh, ride by wire throttle much like all the newer bikes now which allows them to use different mapping it, it smooths out the acceleration also it uh, it has traction control now like I said it's got all the electronic rider aids it's got uh, uh, for the traction control it has 10 intervention levels or modes um, so it's which is great because it helps reduce rear wheel spin however I wouldn't rely on it um, I wouldn't push myself harder than I normally would and just hope that the uh, traction control will save my ass because I've seen a lot of, of pro riders, uh, you know, very good riders on YouTube doing reviews on these bikes, push it a little harder and end up crashing the bike. So um, I, I wouldn't put all my trust and faith in these rider aids, but uh, I'm sure they'll probably help you out in, in a situation. But uh, also this bike has the inertial measurement unit which uh, IMU is the acronym which measures pitch roll and yaw it has power modes which the bikes I think have had for a long time now uh, which you know power modes A B and C uh, which obviously I believe A would probably be the top power mode in my opinion this is kind of useless for seasoned riders most people keep it in power mode A or whatever the, the top power mode is uh, so I, that's more of a marketing gimmick in my opinion, but for it could be great for new riders to help them get acclimated to the power. Um, also, uh, they reduce the weight in, in some areas on this bike, and starting with the frame, it's supposedly 10% lighter and a little bit more compact. Uh, it has a new aluminum swing arm, supposedly for better feel. It's got the Suzuki Ram Air Direct Ducks, which which the you know, fast you go, it's going to bring in a little bit more air, make the bike a little quicker. Supposedly, they improved the cooling system. It uses 400 cc less coolant now. The triple clamp is supposedly lighter. 
uh, the the uh, fuel tank is supposedly a little lower so that you can tuck in uh, so that helps uh, reduce wind drag the uh, uh, the fairings are made more to be more aerodynamic uh, you know less less uh, wind drag it's got a new electronically controlled steering damper which helps keep the bike stable at all speeds it has carryover brakes from last year, the Brembo monoblock, which are fantastic, uh, you know, with the radial mount calipers. It has Showa balance-free suspension, uh, Showa big piston fork, and Showa shock, same as last year. It's got the bi-directional quick shift system for up and down clutchless shifts, which employs ignition retard to unload the gearbox during upshifts and blips the throttle during downshifts. It has, uh, like I said, launch control, which I wouldn't use. It has an easy start system, which you press a start button and it cranks until started. You don't need to keep pressing the starter button. That, that's, that's always good. It has a low RPM assist, so it, it reduces the chance of you stalling. So at, when that stops or slow riding, it will automatically increase the RPMs to prevent stalling. It has motion track brake system. So if it detects the rear wheel lifting, actually the ABS brakes will adjust the front brake pressure for you automatically. Also, when you brake, when you're leaned over, the ABS is going to optimize the front brake pressure for you. Uh, it has a full LCD instrumentation with six levels of brightness. I can't tell whether it's color or it's grayscale, uh, but either way, it looks pretty cool. But you know what? It has a fuel gauge it has an actual fuel gauge and not a fuel computer like the cbr 1000 wr it's got a fuel gauge i think this is like the only super bike on the market that's going to have a fuel gauge on the instrumentation panel that that is sick and that could be you know one reason why i get this bike even though i like the fuel computer on my bike uh, but this bike has so much stuff man it's got full led lighting uh, supposedly it's uh, you know it uh, it's 20% narrower now so it's not a fat pig anymore uh, and what it all boils down to this bike is 445 pounds with the for the ABS version uh, they're gonna have an, a non ABS version and an ABS version the non ABS version is 441 pounds wet like I said the ABS is 440 five pounds so this bike is a lot heavier than the new 2017 cbr 1000rr which is probably going to be sitting at about 432 pounds wet which really gets me hard i think is really sick uh but i tell you guys this bike has a lot of benefits as well and it looks i love the color scheme on this bike much better than the uh, cbr 1000rr the black with the uh, the blue wheels sick I'm not really fond of that, that the, you know, the blue with the big Suzuki written on it, which it looks all right. It looked kind of cheesy to me, but, but the blue, the black with the blue wheels is absolutely sick. And, um, well, 445 pounds is still lightweight in my book, uh, wet. And I mean, that's with ABS. It's got all, everything. Like I said, this bike has everything on it. Uh, the only negatives that I can come up with this bike, um, is the mirrors don't have integrated turn signals. Uh, like they may have in the past it, the exhaust is horrible which by the way the exhaust they they refer to it as Suzuki advanced exhaust system which obviously probably meets the euro 4 emission standards but if you look at all the the new super bikes or you know they all have ugly exhaust so that's uh and that's easy fix you just put slap on an aftermarket exhaust like we do like I did on my bike it makes it sound better and look better and saves weight bada boom bada bang um, but uh, other than that, oh, I don't like the light. I think that uh, that Cyclops light on this bike is not becoming. This is a tough choice. What do you guys think? The 2017 CBR 1000 RR Fireblade or the 2017 Suzuki GSXR 1000? Leave your comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see more of my videos, go to my website, cyclecruiser.com. Click on the menu tab, My Videos. All my videos are categorized in the various playlists. Hopefully you can find something that will inform you or entertain you. Hey, hit thumbs up if you like this video. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my All of My Motorcycle channel. I appreciate all you guys. Take care. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Deuces. Check out my other channel, Cycle Cruiser Motor Vlogs, where I discuss anything and everything, not just motorcycle shit.